God bless you. God bless you once more. I'm so happy that you are joining me today. And I believe beyond any doubt that you are being blessed from wherever you are watching from. And I believe that the word of the Lord is coming to you in power and in grace. I've been very much excited with what I've been seeing all over as we have been engaging on this topic that we have entitled um, Value. And we have explained uh, as much as we can on the subject of value. Uh, we started touching on the issue of information. And today we really want to grasp and go on to speak on the aspect of environment. Because environment is one of the things that affects a person's value. Environment is one of the factors that can affect your value as an individual, that can affect your, your, your value even as a corporate and all. So you get to understand that as we get into this topic, there are many factors that we are going to be touching on. But today we want to specifically speak on the aspect of environment. Your, your environment can affect the way people value you. Your environment. Your environment can affect the way people value you. In most of the times you'd realize that when you look at people, people have got a way that they can judge people. Everybody has got a certain way that they can judge events, judge people, or even judge circumstances. We can look at this. If you take your Bible, if you rush with me to the book, if you rush with me right now, you'd understand the Bible tells us clearly when you read your Bible. The Bible tells us in the book of John. If you read your Bible in the book of John, John chapter number one from verse number 44, the Bible says, And now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. What happened? The Bible says Philip found Nathanael and told him that we have found the one Moses of the law and also the prophets and the war about Jesus from Nazareth, son of David, according to the, to, to the public records. It means who they've been speaking about. The Bible says, and Nathanael answered him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip answered, come and see. Most of the times you'd realize that before people know where you are coming from, before people try to investigate who you are, most of the times they want to try to look at where you are coming from. You'd realize that you might be doing your job very well, you might be a professional, but before you even try to show people and tell people how you do things, most of the times you'd hear people ask, who are you and where are you coming from? This is what has made a lot of people that are gifted, talented, to feel as if they, are, they have no leverage, to feel as if they have no advantage. Why? Because there is that stigma of who are you? People don't want to know who are you, who are you connected to? So the environment in which you might have, uh, you are in as a gifted person, the environment in which you have grown up in, your background, that environment you grew up in, affects the way people see you. It affects the way people perceive you. It will affect the way people perceive you. I don't know if I'm communicating to somebody. It will affect the way people perceive you. And... If it affects the way people perceive you, generally you'd realize that it takes more now to convince people of what you can do. So when, 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 when they went to Nathaniel and told him we have found Jesus, the one on whom the prophets were talking about, Nathaniel said, what are you talking about? Which Jesus are you talking about? To an extent... Of, they had to speak to Nathaniel and they said to him, come and see. We, we can't continue debating with you. But the only thing that we can tell you is come and see for yourself. Have you ever been in, 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 in that kind of a situation where people judge you based on where you are coming from? Where, where people judge you based on where you grew up. 
That is why you'd see a lot of people now, no matter how much they're gifted in a certain place, they would have to go to another environment because they feel that they are not well um they are not well celebrated where they are. Jesus, there is a time when he spoke and he said, a prophet is not celebrated or a prophet is not honored in his own place. Sometimes with the people that are of your own descent. It is hard most of the times to be celebrated by people of your own descent. Have you ever seen that most of the times when you are doing business and there are people that are close to you, people you grew up to, people that are around maybe the place where you are coming from. When you try to do business and sell to them, it is a very difficult venture to go in because no matter how much cheap your product can be, you would realize that some of them, they won't buy because they feel they are going to make you rich. They feel they are going to make you rich. So, so, so environment can affect the way people see you. Environment can affect the way people perceive you. Environment can affect the way people value you, value your gifting, and also value your presence. That is why you would see that um, when somebody great grows, somebody great is raised by God from a certain family, you would see them being celebrated with people that are far off more than people that are of his family because there is that familiarity of we know the environment you grew up in and it's still in you you know it's still in you some will even go to an extent of um trying to rule to say that now god has prospered you or that now you have money you are changing but it's not about change when environments changes there is a shift that happens in personality so environment is very important when when it comes to value and you need to be very much imp you need to be very much careful as far as environment is concerned your your environment number 2 your environment can affect can affect your belief system your environment can affect your belief system it is scripturally when you read your bible you, you would see that it's one of the things that a lot of people debated on and most people when you tell them you are great when you when they are prophesied god wants to raise you god wants to lift you it is very hard for them to receive that word why is it very hard because of where they are coming from so they are coming from a background where they don't feel that there is something good that can come out of them they grew up uh, with the, being told that nothing good can come out of you. So they get to a moment where their belief system now, their belief system is affected and even the way they judge themselves becomes different. Am I to me communicating to somebody? The way they judge themselves becomes different. When you read your Bible in the book of Judges, I want you to take your Bible, the book of Judges. When you go to Judges chapter number 12, verse number 12, 6 verse 12, the Bible tells us about Gideon. The Bible says that an angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, Gideon, O mighty man, or O brave man. The Bible says, And Gideon said to him, Please, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, then why has all this happened to us? And where are all his wondrous works which our fathers told us? He is now narrating. Which our fathers told us when he said he did, uh, did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and has forsaken us. All right? And uh, into the hand of the Midianite. The Lord intended and said, and said, uh, go in his strength. The Lord turned to him and said, go in his strength of yours and save Israel from the hand of the Midianites, for I have sent you. This is God speaking to Gideon. It's the second time. The first time he was greeted. And this time he's being told to go and deliver. Look at what he says. But Gideon said to him, please, Lord, please, Lord, <laughs> how am I to rescue Israel? Behold, my family is the least significant in the Manasseh, and I am the youngest, smallest in my family's house. Now, you are seeing that there is an effect now, there is now a difference between what God is saying and what he believes. And what is affecting what he believes is how he has grown up his environment. It is now the effect of the environment. A lot of people, 
Their destinies have been annihilated. A lot of people, they have come to a place where they have doubted their value. They have depreciated their value because of the environment they've grown up in, the environment they've been. So environment can shape your belief system. Imagine if you grew up in a family whereby none of your none of the family members has ever bought a car imagine growing up in a family whereby none of the family members has ever come even to a place where god has prospered them it will be very much impossible for one to have that firm belief unless god helps and through the word of god it will be very much impo- it will be very much impossible for one to get into a position where they will now, you know, grasp that atmosphere of saying, really God is doing something. Really God is saying something. It, it takes Apostle Paul in the book of Romans 12 verse 2 when he says, Do not be conformed to the things of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It means as long as the mind is not transformed, there is a certain belief system that can control you. As long as the mindset, as long as the mindset is not, is, is, as long as the mindset is not controlled, there is a certain belief system that one might be going through. So a lot of people, that is the environment they are operating in. Whereby they don't believe that anything good can come out of them. Some people, when you even offer them certain sums of money, they are in disbelief. Are you talking about me? Are you giving this opportunity to me? Some people, when they even get to be in a place where they are proposed, they are in disbelief. Me being proposed. How can it be? How, how, how can I be proposed? What is it that I have done? Because they have grown in an environment where nobody valued them before. They have grown in an environment where nobody has shown them that they are worth before. So the environment affects their mindset. The environment affects their belief system. The environment affects their standard of thinking. It it, it controls what they believe is eligible for them to receive. It controls uh, what what they can accept, the the, the status quo. It affects. If a person has grown up, uh, there is a certain saying that says you can transfer or relocate a person from a uh, one-roomed house into a mansion. If you give them enough time, they will change the mansion into a one-roomed, one-roomed house. I, I remember preaching and I spoke of a certain illustration. And I was explaining that sometimes you would see a person who is at the gate complaining to people that are in the offices that they are being given too much money. I can also, you know, I need this money also. And what begins to happen, if you remove the person from the gate to the office, in a short space period of time, you will now be surprised that the customers that were coming to the office are no longer coming. Now, you begin to ask yourself, what is causing this? You see customers no longer coming. Why? Because it's not about the position that would have mattered. No. This person is in their environment because of the mindset. So you would see that what will keep the person at the gate is the mindset. So when the angel came, Gideon was told, mighty man of valor. He said, how can it be? Started questioning God. God said to him, go, go in strength. He started speaking of his genealogy. We are the least in our tribe. I am also the youngest. It's something he grew up being told to an extent that he does not believe that there is something good that can come out of him. <laughs> he does not believe. He does not believe. Number three, your environment, many people, your environment can make you to be comfortable. And that is one of the reasons why many people, their value does not increase. Your environment can make you to be comfortable. Am I communicating to somebody? When you read your Bible in the book of uh, 2 Kings, in 2 Kings chapter number 7, verse 3, the Bible says there were four lepers who were at the entrance of the gate and they said to each other, why sit here till we die? They were at the gate 
and they began to communicate with each other. And this was the conversation. Why should we sit here until we die? These men had an understanding. We cannot continue sitting here because we will die. Why sit here until we die? You know, you can be comfortable in an environment whereby it might be that it's a struggle, it's a situation, and you are in that situation, and you see yourself becoming so much, so much, so much, you know, comfortable in that situation that you don't even think of moving. You don't even think of doing something else. You are fine. <laughs> oh God. You are fine in that situation. You feel so comfortable. You feel so comfortable. And the devil is a way to make people comfortable in situations that are below their value. One of the, one of the environments you'd realize, imagine being in an environment where you are, uh, you are, you are the most celebrated, though you, you have no accolade. There, there is a statement that is very viral that, of being called a local champion. Where obviously you are surrounded by people that clap hands that you are you are the greatest, you are the mightiest. But when you try to really check off on what people are calling great, you would realize that I've been too comfortable in an environment that is not affecting my growth. And it is very important for you to bring yourself to a place where you 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 accept that. Yes, I'm celebrated in this environment, but it's shrinking my creativity. The greatest enemy of success is your past achievement. So you'll be, you'll be so much comfortable in an environment where you've achieved before. You become a former hero, and the world has no respect for former heroes. The world has no respect for former heroes. You, you, you end up being in that environment whereby when you look at yourself, you, 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 yes, you are mighty. You are like Saul. Saul was sitting on the throne. Saul was still fighting battles. But Saul, at that time, God had already removed him. He was no longer on the throne. God had already sidelined him. He had sidelined him. People were clapping hands, but he had sidelined him. What is it that is making you to be comfortable in the environment in which you are? Is it the people that are clapping hands at you? But you need to ask yourself, am I growing? You need to be in an environment that challenges you to be better. You need to be in an environment that gives you a platform to, 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 to showcase your skills. You have to showcase your skills. You have to showcase what you can do. You have to showcase what you are capable of. I, I, want, to, I want to show you something. I want to show you something about capability and skills. Um, I want you to, to, to rush through your Bibles right now to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter number 37. Praise God. I want you to rush to Genesis chapter number 37. I want you to look at something. My God. My God. The Bible says his brothers saw that their father loved Joseph more. And all of them saw they hated him and they could not find themselves with him that they could have friendly terms with Joseph. I wanted to look at this. And the Bible says now Joseph dreamt a dream and told his brothers and his brothers hated him the more. His brothers hated him the more. This is one of the examples of somebody who was gifted. Gifted, but he's an in, in, he is in an environment where his gifting is not recognized. Let me tell you something. Everybody you see is gifted. And there is an environment that will accept, celebrate the gifting that you carry and the gifting that you possess. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Sometimes you'd realize that when you look at the Bible, when it speaks about Jesus, the Bible says... Uh, Jesus could not do many miracles in Nazareth because of their unbelief. He had the capacity to do miracles. He had done miracles before. He knew he could do miracles. But what hindered him from doing miracles was the environment in which he was. He could not do many miracles because of their unbelief. 
Their unbelief hindered him from doing miracles. He wanted to. He had the capacity to. Jesus had the capacity to do miracles, but it was their unbelief that hindered. Oh, I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. <laughs> it was their unbelief that hindered. So you can be gifted, you can be talented, but if you are in a wrong environment, you will feel as if you are, you, you are being sabotaged. You feel as if you are, you, you, you are worthless. You feel as if you, you are useless. Useless is not a bad word. Useless just means you are being used less of your capacity. <laughs> so, so if a person tells you that you are useless, you must just tell them, you are not using me to the, um, to the, to the full maximum potential of my capacity. That's why you are using me less. Am I communicating to somebody? So that was the environment in which Joseph was in. He was dreaming dreams, but because his brothers were not at the same height in which he was, they could not really accept him. They, they hated him for the gifting that he had. It was an environment. It was an environment. I remember the time when God started calling me and I was going to church and, you know, these big churches that we, we, we were going to. And one of the things that became a problem was the pastor that was leading me um, did not understand how I operated. You know, sometimes when God wants to introduce something new, uh, we were just prayerful guys and we were praying. So wh what then happened was, Meeting started happening. Then I was chased uh, from 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 worship, and after some time, um, my same pastor started coming to me to 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 you know to inquire from the Lord because of things that were happening at the church. And by that time, I had already been chased. Um, I was now just worshiping God, you know. So <laughs> it happens. So. God had placed me and gifted me in that environment so that I can be able to bring messages. It was a gifting that was not common in that time. So there was a purpose and a reason why God had brought me at this place. But because people did not understand why God had brought me to this place. They did not understand why God had brought me to this place. It became... It, it, it became a battle, all right? It became a battle. Now, as, as, as we went on further, there was a change that happened. I don't know if I'm communicating to somebody. As we went further, there was a change that happened. There was a, a, a transformation that happened. There was a transformation that happened that in that very same environment or in that very same place, after some time, you know, after, after a, 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 a long time of, of serving, after a long time of serving, what began to happen is they started recognizing this. People that sat for meetings started coming to look for me. Why were they looking for me? They saw the importance of the gifting that I possessed. So the brothers of Joseph rejected this gifting. They rejected the gifting, but it did not end there. When you read your Bible, it did not end there. When you read your Bible, uh, let's go to the book of Genesis chapter number 41. Genesis chapter number 41. Let's go to Genesis chapter number 41. Praise God. The Bible says, now the plan seemed good to Pharaoh and all his Servants, whatever that Joseph had spoken by that time. And the Bible says, So Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find a man like this, a man equal to Joseph, in whom who is divine of the Spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since your God has shown you all the time, there is no one as discerning as clear headed as you. You shall have charge in my house, and all shall be governed at your word, and shall have respect of everybody. Now, 
Now, when you look at this, when you look at this, you would realize that what made Joseph to be promoted was the same gifting that he had when he was at his father's house. It was not a different gifting. It was the same gifting. It was the same gifting. <laughs> it was the same gifting. So that people are not honoring you, that people are not celebrating you, does not mean that you, you, you are not gifted, does not mean that you are not talented. It just means that you are in an in environment where people do not know the value of what you possess as an individual. Don't be dismayed. It happens. It happens. It, it is normal to be in an environment where people do not really know the value of what you possess. They do not really know the value of what you have. They don't know the value. So if people do not know the, the, the value of what you possess, you have sometimes to change your environment. If you can't influence your environment, you have to change your environment. If you cannot influence that environment that you are in, let me tell you something. Change that environment. Otherwise, if you keep on being in that environment, you will be suffocated. And you end up feeling as if you are not enough. You end up feeling as if it is better for me to, 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 to you know, to, to retire. It is better for me not to keep on doing what I'm doing. <laughs> it is better. That is what happens to a lot of people. That is what happens to a lot of people. They end up giving up. A lot of people end up giving up. I want you to know that every gifting, every talent, every potential that God has given and has placed in you, I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that may the Lord come to a place where he lives you. I decree and I declare in Jesus' mighty name, may the Lord God bring you to a place where elevation shall be a portion. May the Lord put you in an environment where you shall be celebrated. Jesus speaking to his disciples, he spoke a statement and he said, if you, if you, if you are in a city and you are not received, remove the dust and go to the other city. Don't force to be accepted in environments, in cliques, in places that people do not value you. You, you should not force. When you see that you are not being accepted, you are not being celebrated in environment, move. Even by people, sometimes environment can be people because environment, we talk about company. Environment institutes of company. What is the company that surrounds the environment that you are in? Who are the people? Who are the people? If, if you are surrounded by worthless people, it's impossible for you to be picked as a remnant. Why? Because of the surrounding, the company. You need to pick sometimes your, your, your friends right. You, you need to pick your friends right. It's one of the things that we are going to be speaking about. You need to, you, you need to pick your friends right. Do, do you remember uh, the Bible when Joseph was fighting Goliath and the king started speaking to, to, jo, to David? It was David who was fighting Goliath. And the king said to, to, to David, do you know that Goliath has been fighting since he was young? Since he was still a teenager, was fighting. And David came to the king and said, do you know how I know God? Because the king is speaking and he is gauging David based on where he's coming from. He understands David is coming from Israel, is coming from a family of Jesse, which is not even uh, a recognized family. So he has to explain to David that the family you are coming from is not a family of warriors. Why are you uh, attempting suicide? But David comes to a point where he tells the king to say, I was not affected by my environment. I killed a bear. I killed a lion. I have proof that even in as much as I'm in an environment, I'm not affected by the environment. He had to prove his worth. You see, when you are coming from a certain environment, you have to push extra to prove your worth. You have to push extra to prove your worth. I have seen it over and over and over again. Where you, you have to keep on explaining what you can do. After you explain, you are given a responsibility. You, you see yourself doing that responsibility and the, the, the way they will check. 
Why? Because you do not have an advantage of your background. But the Bible declares, the Bible declares that, Jeremiah, you must know that before you formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I predestined you as a prophet to the nations. It does not matter where you are coming from. It does not matter the family in which you are born. There is a destiny that God has put upon you. And that destiny supersedes any environment. Come to a place where you understand your value. Understand your value. Understand your value. I was doing an analysis of two nations and I was doing an analysis of doctors, how they are paid in two different nations. And I looked at the other nation, I saw that with the salary that was being given in a year, that doctor, the only thing he can be able to purchase was a car. And in another nation, he was able to purchase a house, um, you know, purchase a house in cash and also go for holiday. And it showed me the effect of environments. It showed me the effect of environments. But what makes a person to come to a place where even as much as they are in an environment, they can outgrow that environment that they are in is when they know their value. I believe that as you are watching me, you are coming to a place where you are recognizing your value. I pray for you in Jesus' name. May your value come to a place where you understand the value that God has given in the inside of you. May God bring you to a place where understanding shall be your habitation. I decree and I declare in Jesus' mighty name. See God lift you up. See God grow you up. And I pray beyond any doubt that you shall supersede any limitation and embargo. May God bless you. May God be with you. Tell somebody that I know my worth. I know my value. In the name and the blood of Jesus. And I shall be influential because I know who I am. God bless you. God be with you. In Jesus' name.